Edition of Judicial Watch with our weekly update live here on Facebook Live. Thanks for joining us this busy week for our anti-corruption fighting efforts at uh, Judicial Watch. For those of you who don't know, Judicial Watch is a nonpartisan anti-corruption group. We're conservative, but we go after Democrats and Republicans. And there's a lot to talk about this week. We have new lawsuits about the IRS. We also got new documents from the IRS. Uh, we also have some outrageous documents that are going to infuriate you about what a sanctuary city is doing in terms of making the public less safe as a result of, leasing, of releasing criminal aliens. Uh, and I also have a Clinton email update. Uh, we had a court hearing this week. I don't want to forget to tell you about that. But first, obviously, it may not be obvious, but this ought to be first in the news in terms of what's going on here in Washington and government corruption, is the Susan Rice Obama scandal of uh, supposedly going after and uh, trying to unmask the names of Trump associates and maybe Trump himself from raw intelligence files. Now, the media will tell you, first of all, Susan Rice, for those of you who don't know, was the National Security Advisor for President Obama. And before that, she was the United States Ambassador to the United Nations during the uh, uh, tenure of Secretary of State Hillary Clinton. And she's the official who went on and lied about Benghazi on all the Sunday morning talk shows shortly after the Benghazi attack. And it was Judicial Watch who proved that the White House was behind Susan Rice's lies. So she's really, she's really a despicable figure in our nation's public life. And the reason she went over to the National Security Advisor position at, the, at, the Hill, at Obama's White House was because it was not a Senate confirmation position or a, Senate, a, a position that required Senate confirmation. Uh, so she's there, National Security Advisor. She's got a demonstrated record of lying about intelligence about a terrorist attack. And so now we're supposed to take her word for it when she says, after first saying that she knew nothing about unmasking anybody, saying, oh yeah, well I unmask people all the time, but never for political purposes, and acknowledging that she was unmasking people associated with the Trump people, uh, the Trump uh, transition and candidacy, and I guess subsequently uh, the president-elect. Now what does unmasking mean? It means when our government intelligence agencies are or uh, surveilling foreigners, they sometimes pick up either communications from Americans or communications concerning Americans. And names are mentioned. And in order to get those names unmasked, because there are privacy uh, protected uh, issue, uh, privacy issues there and constitutional issues there about government surveillance of Americans, there's got to be a foreign intelligence reason. There's got to be a reason that's legitimate to unmask the name. Now, what Susan Rice is saying is, I unmasked those names for legitimate reasons. And I'm saying don't believe her. And I'm saying if we're going to find out what went on, because to say that just because she unmasked the names and the media would have you believe that unmasking the names is legal. Well, it can be legal, but it also can be illegal if it was done for improper purposes. And that's why I went on Fox and Friends yesterday morning. I think the clip should be up on our webpage or a link to the, uh, our YouTube page and talked about this. Now, I know the Congress uh, wants to testify, wants Susan Rice to come in and testify. You know, I guess it's always good to have people provide information to Congress. But we've got to focus on getting a grand jury going here. Because now we have evidence, you know, fact after fact suggesting that this material was utilized for improper purposes. Now, Devin Nunes, who's been targeted by the left, who was the chairman of the Intelligence Committee, looked at some of these materials and he questions why these names were unmasked. To me, that's a good enough reason to get a criminal investigation going on because, first of all, we know there was material that was leaked, and she said she knew nothing about any leaking. Well, I, I don't even know what that means. Uh, does, is she using a, a very specific term for, quote, leaking? But in the improper dissemination of this material, even within the government, would be illegal. So we need a real investigation, and not your typical Clinton investigation, where you had uh, uh, Comey's FBI and Obama's Justice Department bring in all these officials who worked for Hillary Clinton, uh, give them immunity agreements, and that was the end of it. No, a serious investigation includes a grand jury, and that's why I'm focusing and harping on this grand jury issue. And I tell you, it was to President uh, Trump's uh, credit yesterday that he thought that he said the truth. Uh, he told the New York Times he thought Susan Rice committed a crime. Now, of course, the media says, well, he said that without foundation, without basis. Isn't it concerning that you had the prior administration 
investigating, surveilling, and gathering intelligence on the incoming president and candidate for the presidency. And, and we have some independent confirmation there was no legitimate reason for doing so. There's got to be a serious investigation. Now, Congress is going to do it. They're going to do an investigation, but we know how that works. Devin Nunes has already been taken out. Uh, the, Senate conference, the Senate investigation looks to be being run by the left, even though Republicans supposedly are in control there. It uh, doesn't mean the left can't run things, and I think they're essentially running that investigation. Uh, so Judicial Watch is doing our own investigation. We've got two FOIA lawsuits. We've got well over 20 Freedom of Information Act requests. And I tell you, if we don't get answers, we're going to sue in court on some of those as well. And you can rely on us to get the information out there. And if the Congress doesn't want to get it or can't get it, and uh, obviously the Justice Department and the FBI, frankly, ought to be the subject of an investigation given what went on last, uh, last year with under, the, under uh, Obama's misuse of those agencies, it will be Judicial Watch that will get it. So we're very focused on this. And uh, you know, a lot of, I know there's a lot of public policy discussion here in Washington about Obamacare and tax policy and things like that. And we want Obamacare repealed. We want the rule of law uh, uh, reaffirmed. Uh, and uh, abuses stopped, uh, but there's a crisis in terms of what went on with the illegal use, it looks like, of intelligence resources to go after the presidential candidate opposed to uh, President Obama's policies. Uh, this, this has got to be uncovered, and, and we're committed to pursuing it, and I think it ought to be a priority for public uh, policy of, of politicians here in Washington. And uh, so support our work, obviously, but I want you to pressure your elected representatives to take this seriously. So I'm really angry about this. I, you know, I've been doing this work for almost 20 years. I know when something's up, uh, and I suspect there's something up here, and we're going to try to get the documents to figure out what went wrong. But don't you believe the big media when they tell you everything Obama did with respect to surveilling the Trump team was legal, because that's a big lie. And Susan Rice ought to be worried about grand juries, not about congressional testimony. Um, speaking of um, criminal activity or illegal abuses of power, uh, Obama's IRS. So, you know, Obama abuses the IRS to go after his political enemies, but we're not supposed to believe he would abuse the intelligence agencies to do the same thing. And we just received uh, more documents from the IRS. You may recall I reported to you, um, I guess a week or two ago, that the IRS finally told us, oh, well, we have 7,000 more documents we need to look at in response to our lawsuit that had been pending for almost two years about uh, at the, the inappropriate use of, uh, uh, of uh, these taxpayer applications, or these tax-exempt applications from the Tea Party groups, they were using those applications and other materials to in illicitly audit supporters of these groups. And so they tell us a day late and a dollar short that there are more records they have to look at. 7,000 records, and now we just received 695 of those 7,000 records that are responsive. We expect to receive more. Most of it is redacted and blacked out. I should have brought a copy here. Uh, but you, when you look at these records, and we have them all up on our internet site at judicialwatch.org, you can look at them, and you'll see page after page of blacked out material. And they say that's for licit reasons and reason, uh, legal reasons, and I don't believe much of that, but, uh, but what we did see is the IRS admitting almost immediately that they used inappropriate, material, inappropriate criteria to go after the Tea Party. Now, the left says the IRS should have gone after the Tea Party because the Tea Party was doing things they weren't allowed to do. Uh, but the IRS, the Obama IRS, admits they use inappropriate criteria. But I thought they didn't. Obama said there was no scandal. But here, years after the fact, the IRS admits to us once again by producing these documents that they were using inappropriate criteria. And um, in many ways, that's not surprising because they were on a cleanup operation after the scandal was uh, involved and uh, exposed in 2013. Uh, but what really I think is as troubling, if not more so, is even after they were caught, they still tried to suppress the First Amendment rights of these groups. And how did they do that? They said to these groups, and these documents show this, that, look, if you've had an application pending for more than 120 days or six months, is that 120 days? More or less, many months. 
Many of these groups had applications pending for years. They said, well, just sign this document under penalty of perjury, which is not something you're supposed to have to do, that you won't engage in politics. Well, some of these groups can, quote, engage in politics. So the IRS was mandating a restriction on the First Amendment rights of Tea Party groups in order to get, in exchange, their tax-exempt applications approved. So it was abuse piled on abuse. We're going to delay it forever. Oh, and when we're caught, we're just going to make you do, uh, restrict your ability to talk about politics. Now, the rule is under C4, for C4 groups, these are political groups. Judicial Watch, for instance, is a charity. We're a C3 group. So we don't get involved in campaigns. We don't say vote for this person and vote for against that person. Uh, it's, uh, we're, we, we're, we have to be very careful there. But C4 groups can come out and do, run ads about candidates, and they can say, hey, John, John, uh, uh, John, uh, John Doe uh, votes uh, against good things. Uh, you should think about that. Well, the IRS is saying you can't do much of that, or as much of that as the law typically allows, in exchange for getting your application uh, approved. I mean, a real abuse of power. So we have an admission they're doing something wrong, and then further documentation that they continue to do things wrong by extorting uh, 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 a promise to not do what you're allowed to do under the First Amendment to get approval from this IRS government agency. I tell you what, uh, John Koskinen, Obama's IRS commissioner, is still there. I don't understand why he's, still, why he's still there. President Obama needs to get rid of him and clean house at the IRS. Uh, this agency is incorrigible, and I know they talk about tax reform, and in my view, tax reform would be the elimination of this agency uh, that is a sort of Damocles over the First Amendment. Now, along those lines, we sued the IRS again this week, but we also sued the Health and Human Services Department. And everyone's talking about repealing Obamacare, but no one's talking about why Obamacare needs to be repealed. And one of the key reasons it needs to be appealed, I shouldn't say no one is talking about it, but you know, those who talk about it repealing Obamacare don't have any much of a voice on the Hill, because no one wants to repeal Obamacare. But we have information, and even Republicans have complained about this, that the IRS and the HHS were working together to use taxpayer data to communicate with uh, uh, people about their health insurance. Well, that isn't what it's supposed to work. So we've sued the IRS and the HHS about the misuse of this taxpayer data. You know, one of the outrages about Obamacare is that they would require you to uh, carry insurance and if you didn't carry insurance and health insurance, you'd be subject to some penalties on your taxes. And the IRS, obviously, is the vehicle for doing that. Now, they were, it, look, it looks like, according to uh, reports, uh, they were, the IRS and the HHS were working together. Those people who paid penalties, you became part of a marketing program to get you onto Obamacare. Well, that's not what the IRS material is supposed to be used for. You pay taxes and pay penalties to the IRS, and you get on a government list from other agencies to start asking to do other things, another abuse of power by the IRS and the uh, and HHS, and it's another example of why we need uh, more, uh, first of all, Obamacare to be repealed, but it's another example of the Obama administration using the IRS and abusing the rules, protecting your privacy uh, to uh, advance its political agenda. So, a lot of outrage about the IRS this week. Travis County, Texas. Now, that's Austin, Texas, I believe. Uh, it's been in the news recently because it's an infamous sanctuary city. Uh, they refuse to honor ICE detainers, and the Texas governor's going after them. Uh, they may lose money, and obviously uh, the Trump administration is now targeting sanctuary cities. But we don't know the... Uh, uh, how, just how bad it is until you get into the nitty-gritty and you get the documents. And that's what Judicial Watch specializes in, exposing government malfeasance, corruption, and failure to follow the law. And in that regard, we asked the Travis County officials for documents about ICE detainers that they refused. And what we got was a catalog of horrors in terms of the crimes of the illegal aliens that were being protected as a result of the Travis County Sheriff's Department's refusal to honor these ICE detainers. And in some cases, ICE had actually sent Travis County uh, these illegal aliens so that they could serve their time or be 
uh, prosecuted by local and state authorities, and then and then later Travis County wouldn't even get back to ICE when they were uh, when it was time to release them or refuse to detain them if ICE asked them to retain them again. I mean, really egregious in terms of obstructing the rule of law and placing citizens at risk. So the documents show uh, that the uh, those protected by Travis County included uh, inmates convicted of 34 acts of violence and 14 thefts and burglaries. Uh, 58 of those individuals had DWIs. Uh, there were eight drug possession uh, charges, six firearms uh, violations, 45 assorted felonies and misdemeanors, and others including, um, I think, making terroristic threats and things like that. So. I tell you, as surely as night follows day, these some of these groups, some of these people who were released, despite being eminently deportable, if I had known about them, will go on to commit additional crimes. And these DWI charges are really egregious. I mean, we've worked with uh, a number of families, including a family in Chicago, people killed by illegal alien drunk drivers. You know, I know we're you know victims of crime. Uh, you know, it's terrible to be a victim of. And if you're a victim of crime by another American citizen, that's terrible. But when you're a victim of crime by an illegal alien who shouldn't be here, and who could have been but wasn't deported, and wasn't deported because a public official decided that they were going to let this criminal onto the streets to make a political point on illegal immigration, I, it, to me that is, the, that is an outrage on top of an outrage. And... Uh, we're asking for more documents from more sanctuary cities, and Judicial Watch is suing, and we have sued sanctuary cities, and we'll sue them again. We have a current lawsuit against the San Francisco Sheriff's Department over its sanctuary policy. I mean, these sanctuary policies, the left likes to think they're being moral and high-minded and high -minded in doing it, but they're dangerous and deadly, and they're outside, and they undermine the rule of law, and they place you at risk. And, I can, uh, and this is something we've been committed to for years, and we're finally happy that there's an administration that is actually concerned about this issue, too. Uh, but they're going to have battles on their hands. You know where the courts are when it comes to the Trump administration. So that's why it's important you have independent groups like Judicial Watch, and we're willing to do it, uh, go to court or uh, use the tools available under law to find out what's going on and stop it if we can. So uh, you can read the details on all of these stories at our website at judicialwatch.org. And obviously we have the links here on Facebook.live, uh, on, on Facebook.com, excuse me. Also, and I'll end up with, we had a hearing on the Clinton emails this week. Remember all those emails that Hillary Clinton or Yuma Abedin had on Anthony Weiner's laptop? Well, the FBI still hasn't turned them over to the State Department so they could be turned over to the Judicial Watch under FOIA. And the Trump administration has its lawyers going to court this week and uh, set out a schedule or confirm a schedule set by the Obama administration that won't allow us to see all the Clinton emails they have, but haven't released yet, until perhaps 2020. So transparency hasn't changed under the Trump administration, and I appreciate there's been a delay in, in transition issues because the Senate Democrats don't want Trump officials to be appointed. You know that's their only leverage of power, uh, and the and the result is there aren't too many Trump officials in these agencies, like in the State Department. But whatever, who is ever over there needs to understand that this transparency issue is an important one. The White House needs to understand this transparency issue is an important one. They need to take this approach of erring on the side of transparency. And when they go to court, you would think they would pay attention as to what their position is in court, either at the Justice Department or at the State Department, and evidently it's not happening. And, I mean, that's a terrible interpretation. The one that is nerve-wracking nerve is, and the one that ought to be particularly upsetting, is that maybe they don't care about transparency. I hope that's not the case. Uh, but no matter what happens, we're going to be pursuing these records, and we hope the Trump administration's on our side, rather than having to keep on fighting the federal government to get access to government information we have a right to under the law. So you can see Judicial Watch is a very active organization. Uh, your, your support helps us do this work. We don't rely on Congress, we don't rely on the President, we don't rely on the administration to get the information and to get the word out. We do our own work, and that's how we broke open Benghazi, that's how we broke open IRS, that's how we broke open and held Hillary Clinton accountable for her, for her Clinton emails that wouldn't have been done 
if we had to wait for either the executive branch or Congress to do it. It simply wouldn't have been done. And so uh, you can see on the Susan Rice issue, on the IRS still, and the key issues related to immigration, we're still in the lead on this. And uh, with your support, we'll continue to be. So thank you very much. Have a great weekend, and I'll see you next week.